Two teenagers, Aliu and Farouk, sat before a five-inch plasma TV, their fingers repeatedly tapping on the different buttons of their game controllers. Goal! Aliu screamed on scoring a goal. Just then, the door of their room was pushed open to reveal their elder sister, Naima. The two boys hissed together the sight, on the sight of her. And then they continued with their game, not minding that she came to their room. Well, she already knew that they would neglect her, so she was not surprised. Because it usually happened whenever she comes to um, tell them that it's time for prayer. So when she told them it's time for prayer, they just neglected her. And so she went to the TV and blocked their view and obstructed their view, sorry. So, as such, she said, um, it is time for prayer. She said, clapping their, her hands. But it was as if she addressed a republic of deaf people. She anticipated their neglect, so she walked to the TV and obstructed their view. Oh, the two of them chorused together in annoyance. Oh, she mimicked them with her voice, and that further prostrated them. Go and pray, she said, placing both her hands on her waist. Like we both, and they said, we'll go and pray as soon as we finish. But she knew that they would not go. And so she said, I know you are lying. You are going nowhere. So one of them got frustrated. Why in our own the salam? Say, take it, Wallahi, you are my brothers, and I would love to see you in Jannah. And that is not possible without prayer, without your salah, is it? Allahu Akbar Ustazia, <laughs> one of them said. We can always repent, so just get out of our room and let us play our game. Ah, I will, she said. But I won't let this game drag you to hell. And then she picked up their game consoler and smashed it on the ground. So, you see, there is no game then. You have to go and pray. But no. They say, no, if you destroy the game, we have something else. And they both retired to using their phones. All right, she gave up. So, she decided to walk away. But on her way, they were hissing, so she felt hurt, depressed, and broken. She went outside crying. The moment she was outside, a familiar voice knocked the doors of her ears. Umana, why are you crying? A familiar voice asked. Abba, she was surprised to see him home at this time because he was not usually home almost all the time. He was annoyed on seeing her tears. It's your brothers, right? It's your brothers. Did they raise a hand on you? He asked. No, Abba, she said. The problem is I've been hiding it from you, but they don't usually pray. What? Her father said. And then he bolted into their rooms and closed the door from the inside. <laughs> we can already guess what is going to happen. Well, very soon they scream, Why yo, Baba? Why yo, Baba? Their scream came. And when they came out of the room, they, were, they had bruises on their faces, but they, they had to pray the hard way. Well, after the prayer, they came back, but from that day, they started hating their sister for what she did. And they started treating her meanly, and they would hate her. They often treat her bad. From that day, their relationship was never the same. All because she wanted them to pray. So, as time went by, one day, they woke up. And when they woke up, the sun was already up. Uh -uh, that's not usual. Because normally, either their sister or their father will come to wake them up for prayer. But today, it did not happen. As such, the two were surprised. Uh -uh, what happened today? Even them themselves were, ah, okay, yo, munsha, kwana, amade, inamuta, nengidena. So they went to check. When they went around the house, sadly, they could find nobody in the house. 
when that was a rare sight, so they went to the gate and asked um, the man in charge of the gate, please, where are the people of this house? And he told them where they were. The moment he told them where they were, the two boys rushed to their car because that's a place nobody wants to go. It was the hospital. They rushed. They drove as if they were driving an ambulance. They were in a hurry, and soon they reached the hospital. But when they reached the hospital, they were surprised to see their father crying. The moment he saw them, anger replaced his sadness. Instead of being sad now, anger showed on his face like an angry bull. You know angry bull, right? An angry bull. Well, he charged at them. He wanted to break them, to beat them black and blue there. But fortunately for them, his friends were able to restrain him from injuring them. And then he told them something that broke them down forever. Even on her deathbed, he said, she kept calling your names. Make them pray, O Abba, make them pray. Thank your stars that her last words were shahada. I would have ripped you apart, he said. Both Farouk and Aliyu stared at each other. The ground beneath them shook and the earth above rotated. As much as they did not want to believe, but their sister was gone. She was dead, never to come back. Their knees grew weak, their knees grew weak as they broke down in tears. She was right. Death comes when we least expect, expect it. From that day, their biggest regret was the way they treated their sister, even though all she wanted was for their betterment, for them to pray rightfully. From that day, whenever they hear the azan, whatever they are doing, they will look at their door, waiting to see her coming, to tell them it's time for prayer. But will she come? No, she will never come because she's gone. And so they will stand to go and pray by themselves. So her death was a turning point for them. This story can be your own turning point. Do not play with your five daily prayers, please. Thank you. And that is the end of the story.